Hi there, my name is Aurel, and I'm the chief economist of the Fractal Protocol. I'm also the co-founder of the Cine Foundation. The Cine Foundation is a non-profit think and do tank that leverages latest research from cryptography and economics to enable open source technology for data collaboration. Today, I want to talk to you about our latest idea, the smart cookie. The smart cookie could actually change the way the whole advertising industry works. And before we talk about this in more detail, I would like to talk to you about the different stakeholders within this industry. So on the one hand, you have publishers. Publishers are websites or apps like the New York Times or Candy Crush. They show content or, or provide items that you can buy online. Then you have users like you and me that actually go to publishers to consume content, but to also buy things online. And last but not least, you have advertisers like, for example, Mercedes-Benz that show advertising on publishers that should be consumed by us, the users. And as we now know the different stakeholders, let's now think about what the different stakeholders actually need or want from this ecosystem. So you have us, the users, or how many people, including myself, call them the producers. You're not only enjoying the free web and consuming relevant content, we are also producing a lot of content on Instagram or Facebook um, when, when they're up and, and running. And by doing so, we also want to see as few ads as possible. Even though there are a few people that actually like personalized advertising because they like to see things that they're interested in and to buy more things um, that they maybe already purchased or similar things that they have purchased. What we're also seeing right now is an increasing awareness for data privacy issues. And I think that's also what brings us all to effective protocol. Very closely related is we understand now that we are producers. Right? We're not only consuming, we're also producing the free web. We are contributing our data to this ecosystem and we want to be rewarded for it. In an earlier talk, I explained that we estimate that our data is worth roughly $100 per person per year. And we expect this number to even further grow over the next couple of years as the advertising industry also increases. The next group I would like to look into are the publishers. They want to understand their user base. Right? They need to understand what's going on, what people are visiting their, 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 their website, what they do on their website, in order to also provide personalized content. They want to provide also personalized ad spaces that they can generate higher prices for. So basically by this, we are financing the free web somewhat and the publishers can actually generate higher revenues by our data. Is this only something that benefits the publishers? No, there are also very many use cases where we benefit from providing our data to the publishers. Assume that you're going to an e-commerce platform for the very first time and you're buying a very expensive product. Can the publisher send you this product and let you pay later via invoice? They need to understand your credit worthiness in order to do so. They cannot just send it to you out of the blue and just hope for the best, right? So this is just a very easy example that where publishers and also us the users actually benefit when publishers know certain things about us. Last but not least, we have the advertisers. And here also the good news is they don't care about you at all. The only thing that they care about is they want to deliver ad campaigns as efficient as possible. At the end of the day, they want to understand where is the ad being shown, what are the target groups that click on this ad the most, and then finally also purchase our products the most. Because they want to sell their products as, as good as possible at the lowest possible price. And for this, they need to be able to run certain analytics on the data of the users to optimize the campaigns accordingly. How was this solved in the past? The old way was the good old cookie. And this was a pretty promising solution for advertisers and publishers. So out of a sudden, they had a lot of transparency. Um, unfortunately, not the users, right? For us, it was 
very annoying. Seventy uh, percent of users feel that they do not have any control anymore about their data. We are all annoyed by the retargeting campaigns hunting us for weeks. And as it often happens in practice, if a solution forgets about one of the most important stakeholders, politics come, comes into, play, into the game and regulates the whole thing. And what we're seeing right now is a tremendous change in industry. Safari and Firefox have already implemented some blocking against third-party tracking cookies. The most used desktop browser, Google Chrome, announced something, then it delayed it a bit to 2023, but there's also something coming. And we are at a point where advertisers call this the cookie apocalypse, the death of the cookie. There are many alternative solutions out there right now, for example, the Google's privacy sandbox. But there are many concerns that this could even further harm competition, that this could concentrate yet more power in the hands of the search giant. There are also many concerns that the privacy sandbox is in conflict with Europe's GDPR and is actually currently under antitrust scrutiny in the US. How do publishers react to this? <clears throat> They create a lot of gated services and logins, many facing very low conversion rates on that. Some of them then try to tackle this with social logins, which is even worse, because then again, all the data ends up with the two large companies, Facebook and Google, at the end of the day. So we believe there needs to be a smarter solution to this. So we called it the, the smart cookie. It works like the old cookie but with a self-sovereign and encrypted dimension to it. This means your data would be stored in a decentralized data wallet and the access to this cookies data, also its management and evolution. So this means the change of the data on this cookie happens under secure multi-party computation. And we're gonna talk about this in a minute, what this actually means. But this implies that each interaction with this cookie requires an opt-in from all parties. This also means that the content of the cookie never leaves the wallet and any input and output given is encrypted at all times. This means we can still offer custom functionalities such as ad delivery mechanisms, subscriptions, etc. However, we can provide the services without evading the privacy of its users. So how could this actually work? And I want to give you a very short, very simple example of secure multi-party computation. Let's assume we have Alice, Bob, and Charlie, all of them visiting an e-commerce platform, and they spend different amounts on this platform. Right? So Alice, Alice spent $55 on it, Bob $20, and Charlie $45. And the e-commerce platform now wants to understand what's the average spending of my users on my page. That's a very legitimate question to ask, right? Because websites need to understand such things in order to optimize the offering. So how could this work? With the community party computation in a very easy way is that Alice, Bob and Charlie take their purchasing amount and split it into three equal, uh, into three pieces. They can take positive and negative numbers, doesn't matter. The important part is that those three pieces sums up to the actual purchasing amount. So Alice, for example, takes a 55 and splits it into 30, 45, and minus 20. So the sum of it is 55. Same for Bob with 20, it's equal to 10 minus 40 plus 50. And Charlie takes a 45 into 60 plus 15 minus 30. Now they hand over to the e-commerce platform, not the individual purchasing amounts, but all those different three pieces. And in a way that the e-commerce platform does not realize or cannot identify what piece is coming from what users. So basically what the platform sees is just a huge amount of different pieces of data, different pieces of, of numbers, which they can now use in order to run an operation. In our example, it was a simple average. So it just takes the sum of it and divides it by three to then receive the average spend of $40 per user. Obviously, this is a super simple example, 
but you can run much more sophisticated operations with the true multi-party computation on this smart cookie technology. Actually, SNPC is a fantastic example of success in the long game of research. For the first 20 years, no application were in sight, and it was questionable whether or not MPC could ever be used. However, in the past three years, similar to the zero knowledge proof community, it has undergone a radical transformation. It has become fast enough to be used in practice. So we're now talking about the speed of tenth of milliseconds. It became three orders of magnitude faster in the last year, but it also has received industry recognition and has made the transition to a technology that's actually deployed in practice, for example, by Google and Facebook themselves. We as the Senior Foundation, we actually conduct active research in this area to push further research breakthroughs to make secure multi-party computation practical on large data sets and for complex problems. We are also, by the way, looking for uh, Rust engineers that help us building the first open source SMPC engine that's out there. So please get in touch if, if, if you're interested. Um, so we just talked about the technology. Let's come back to the sovereignty example. And I just want to give you a few examples how you could interact with the smart cookie. So for example, you could make restrictions on how long data is being stored on this cookie or what it's being used for. This means you can still enjoy the free web, still have personalized content being provided to you, but on the rules that you define on your wallet. You could, for example, also limit uh, who your data can work with. So you could, for example, say universities have access to all of my data. However, advertisers have only access to certain areas of my data. And as the data is encrypted at all times, if you let one party look at your whole data set, this party cannot forward this information to another party. Right? It's encrypted at all times. No party ever learns anything about yourself as a safe throughout the whole supply chain. At the end of the day, we are currently seeing two very positive trends, raising awareness for data privacy and also amazing progress in applied research in encryption technologies. And we believe that both trends paint a very positive future for privacy. Thank you very much.